so glad you've taken a minute to tune in. We're gonna have children's church even though we're all in our homes. Welcome to my living room. I'm super excited. We're gonna hear from some of our friends. We've got another. It's Duffrey! What? Say again, I'm not understanding. Wait a. Oh. Do I have a fever? Do you have a fever? Is this a fever? Oh my goodness. It says you're just fine, actually. Oh, good. Oh, oh because this morning, I coughed. You it was hot. horrible. Oh, and then, oh, last dear. night before bed, I sneezed. You sneezed? It was horrible. I almost cried. Why did you almost cry, Duffy? I've been Are... very anxious recently. And, yeah, wait, you've been what? Very anxious. Very, wait, do you mean anxious? Like um, kind of worried yeah, about everybody so. getting sick? And you were anxious that you might have a fever? Yeah. Oh, Duffrey, you don't need to be worried. First of all, your temperature is fine. That's good news. <sighs> and we're going to be talking today about not being anxious. Oh, In good. fact, I've got a Bible verse right here. This is the one we're going to be learning about today. It talks about the birds. Have you seen the little white snow buntings that are flying around these days? Yeah. They're just darling. They have such a sweet little song. And listen to what it says. Look at the birds of the air. This is from Matthew 6. They don't sow or reap. That means they're not taking care of themselves, getting themselves food. And yet your heavenly Father cares for them. Aren't you of more value than they are? That's God telling, actually Jesus is the one who told us this lesson and he's saying, look at the little birds, how I take good care of them and you're worth so much more to me than them. We're going to talk more about the sparrows, but I just want you to know you don't have to be anxious at oh, all. That's good because I was like really anxious. Anxious, yeah. yeah. You know, something else that just might encourage you, have you had a chance to meet Ani yet? I haven't gotten to meet any of the kids. Oh, that's right. You it's only, so sad. Oh, you so are going to love I'll our kiddos. All of the kids. And I just like, oh. Aww. Well, the kids can't wait to meet you, too. But little Ani has a song. She loves our song, Good Morning, God. And she Ooh. sang it for us with Miss Kate. So that Aww. might be just the thing to cheer you up. Yay. All right. We'll go see Ani right now. Good morning, God. This is your day. I am your child. Show me your way. Good morning, God. This is your day. I am your child. Show me your way. Good job. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Thank you so much for your song, Ani and Miss Kate. I love that song and I loved hearing you sing it. I also love God's word because we know it's true and we know that we can put our life on the things that are in here and we don't have to worry if God's gonna take care of us. The verse that I started reading to little Duffrey because he was worried about getting sick, that's a good verse for all of us. At the end of this chapter in Matthew 6, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be taken care of. He was talking about not being anxious. Don't worry about what you're gonna eat or what you're gonna wear, or even grown-ups have been worried about how they're gonna have enough toilet paper. That kind of seems silly, doesn't it? And he talks about little sparrows, and I have something special to show you. In my pockets, I have two little sparrows. They're not real, but they're really special to me. These were my grandma's and I loved them so much. She always had them at her house, two little sweet sparrows that she would have up on a shelf or by her china cabinet. And my grandma's in heaven now. And my little sister found these at her house one day and she gave them to me because she knew that I love the story of the sparrows. The Bible says that sparrows are precious to God. Even though they're just a tiny little bird, and there's lots of them all over,
But the Bible tells us that when one of them falls to the ground, God sees it. He cares about these tiny little birds. And then he says, don't worry, you're worth so much more than them. And so I have little birds and sparrows. In fact, I have a friend that even gave me a sparrow necklace because they have a special message to me. If God cares about these tiny little birds, he cares so much about me. In fact, there's a song about that. His eye is on the sparrow. That means he's watching out for them. And I know he watches me. Miss Kate's going to help us learn that. Hi everybody, it's Miss Kate and Mr. Noah is helping me on the guitar. Hey guys. Today we're going to learn a song called His Eyes on a Sparrow. Well, the chorus of a song. So first it goes, I sing because I'm happy. And then it, I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And we're going to do a little bird in our hand. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Alright, let's sing it now. Alright. Ready? I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Let's do it again. I sing because I'm happy. I love that Sparrow song. Thank you for singing it. Next, we have a special story from Silas. Today I'm telling you about Paul and Silas from the Bible. So like, Paul and Silas went on a trip together. And then they were, and they were going to Rome. And then they got stuck in jail for preaching about God. And, and, the, and then they praised and praised to the Lord. They praised the Lord in jail? Yeah. Instead of complaining? Yeah. Was jail a really nice place to be? No. No? So even though it wasn't a nice place to be, they praised the Lord? Wow. And so, so like, like they praised and praised, and, and, and then God sent an earthquake. Then the doors and, and windows sprang open, and then they got out there. And the person who was who was guarding them, and he 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 was responsible for them. So he took took a knife to to kill himself. And then Paul and Silas said, "Wait, we're not gone yet." And then and then the soldiers prayed to the Lord too, and then he got to know, know about God. Oh my goodness. What can we learn from this story, from this amazing story? Mm -hmm. Like, we can learn about in our houses. If we praise and praise the Lord, then, then we think the sickness would go away, I think. Oh, so even though we're stuck in our houses because of the sickness and we can't see our friends and we can't go to church, we can't go to school, we don't have to complain. We can still find a reason to praise the Lord. Is that right? Oh my goodness. What a good lesson to learn from this story. Thanks for sharing. Can you say good to see you to all your friends? Good to see you to all your friends. All your friends. Can you wave? And now it's time for your favorite and mine, an object lesson! I have here a whole bunch of jars. I have one empty jar. For our object lesson today, this jar is gonna be me or you. It's gonna symbolize us and our lives. I want you to think with me about your everyday life and this is a challenge from the last verse of Matthew 6 where Jesus talked about the things that we can worry about and he said don't worry don't be anxious 
Seek first God's kingdom and he'll take care of everything else. I want you to imagine your typical day. So many little things fill up our day. I've got here a big jar of rice. So many little things fill up the moments of our day. Getting up, brushing our teeth, maybe watching a little bit of TV or looking at the computer, taking a shower, combing our hair, looking out the window. A whole day can get filled so quickly with lots of little things. Sometimes there's even some more important things that happen in our day. I've got some glass beads here that kind of show us that. Important things like, oh, maybe spending time with family. Um, maybe some schoolwork. That's really important. What about, oh, talking to grandparents or aunties and uncles. We can fill our day with some pretty important things also. But if you're anything like me, so often we get to the end of our day and we haven't taken time for the biggest things, the most important things. That would be time listening to God, talking to Him. Okay. Um, what about time to love others and care for them and serve others? Oh dear. I don't even have time for prayer or worship or telling others about Jesus. I, it just doesn't fit. You see, when we let our life get just filled up with little things and a few important things, often the most important things don't make it into our day. So I want you to imagine with me a different scenario. Now imagine with me a new day. A day where we're going to take care of the things that matter the most first. Well, of course, the biggest thing is taking time to be with God, to open our hearts to him, to pray, to listen to what he has to say to our hearts through his Bible and through worship. Um, taking time to give thanks to God for his goodness. Sometimes when things are hard, like this pandemic, um, it's easy to forget to give thanks. Maybe we can put that in there. Let's add loving one another and serving the body of Christ or our family, those that Jesus would put on our hearts, taking care of others. Let's put those important things in. And then let's add the other very important things like our schoolwork, maybe helping around the house, family meal time, maybe spending some time with your brother or sister to help them laugh a little bit. Well, would you look at that? There's room for the most important things and for other things as well. And then think about all those extra minutes we need to spend with little things like staring out the window, playing a little game, um, eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all these things. You know, it's actually kind of amazing because when we start with the most important things, we find that there's room for everything. Look at this. We can fit in all the things that would give God joy in our day and give us peace through our days. Isn't that amazing? It all fits. The important things first. That's the lesson that God's teaching us when he says, seek first my kingdom, my way of doing things, and everything else will be taken care of. So we have these days in quarantine where we're not getting out and going to school and doing our regular things, but we can still seek first God's kingdom. We can start our day with the most important things that need to happen because we're God's children. We love him. So starting our day by telling him, Jesus, I love you. Starting our day by opening up our hearts to listen to what he might want to say to us. You can find time to go somewhere secret and quiet and take some time to listen. Is Jesus talking to your heart? And you can talk back to him. That's prayer. You can ask your mom and dad to help you read a story from the Bible. If you're big enough, you can read it for yourself. You can serve and love and worship. Those are the most important things. And we do it not because we have to, but because Jesus said if we seek first his kingdom, his way of doing things, he'll take care of everything else. 
it all fits. And you'll find that your days in quarantine, they're not just wasted, but they're used for God's glory and you have so much joy because everything fits. Hi, boys and girls again. I hope you had a great week this week. I sure did. I've been enjoying the snow. So again, I thought I would say a prayer with you all and over your week as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and close your eyes and bow our heads and we'll, we'll pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you so much for your provisions and for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, that we had a great week this week and all the fun that we had. Lord, I pray that today that as we go in, into our day and, and through our week, Lord, that we will remember to stop and to, to thank you for our many blessings. Lord, help us to always remember to be thankful and have a, a thankful heart, a grateful heart for all your provisions. Lord, again, as things are seem kind of scary and that's going on, Lord, and that, you know, it's not very fun to have to stay in our house and not to get get to go out and see our friends and our church family. But Lord, we know that you are protecting us and that you have protected our family and our church family and our friends. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the children as they as they go about their day and give them fill their hearts, Lord, with, with joy and peace. Lord, we thank you for, for all you've done, and we just continue to pray for, for our children, and we pray for this week, Lord. Help us to have a great week, and we thank you, Lord, that we are going to have a great week. We, Lord, we also thank you for Miss Carly and for all that she's, she's doing to put this together for our children, and Miss Vanessa, and Miss Vicki, and all those, Lord, that are are coming together to make this video for our children's sermon come together. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We praise you, Jesus. Once again, be with us throughout this week and give us a great day. In Jesus' name, amen. See you later, boys and girls. Have a great week, and I sure love and miss you. Thank you, Miss Michelle, for that special prayer time. And thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next Ready, week. And we'll, we're, we're oh, don't oh, worry, yes. You're still here. Oh, um, yep, I'm still here. <laughs> What's up? Well, Bill and Paul wanted to tell you that they are almost out of cheese puffs. The puppets are almost out of cheese puffs? Yes. Why Horrible. does that make me feel nervous? All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. Why don't you help me say goodbye to the kids? Oh, bye. bye. We'll see you later. Don't eat too many cheese puffs. <sighs> You're here. Let's sing it one more time. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free.